I bought two of these 12 inch griddles from Bed Bath & Beyond for $18 each. The idea is to put two of them together back to back to make a Marquisita maker. Here's how they'd look in use. See how the rear hand holes fit on top of each other with just enough room for a hinge. The hinge is made from one half inch sections of two inch square tubing and a piece of tubing that nests within it then cut in half to make two U shapes. I made a hinge to bolt to the hand holes at the back of the griddles. Here's how the hinge looks bolted to one half. See the drilled and tapped holes for the hinged parts. Both halves end end. The unit assembled after polishing yeah. the unit assembled after polishing the mating faces with a soft wheel of an angle grinder. The Marcosita maker sitting on our gas stove. Another shot of the two halves after we seasoned them with Crisco and heat. Results of the first couple of tries during our first test of the system. I made the hinge to fit too well so it squeezed the batter towards the front when I squeezed the handles. The mess on the stove after the first test. The front handles angle slightly which keeps the maker from sitting flat on the burner. I'll have to correct that. A couple of more tries with our first batch of batter. They look better but didn't harden up as much as we like. We used the Rick Bayless recipe. We learned that we need to add more sugar to the recipe. Here you can see that I got the halves too close together so there's no room for the Marcosita to form. I will put a thinner hinge pin in which will give me about 1 16th of an inch between the two halves. Back to the drawing board. Up to this point there were no diamond shaped grooves in the maker. I will now add them. Here's the CAD layout for the design. After laying them out I simply cut them in freehand with a cutoff wheel and a Harbor Freight die grinder. See how I have ground off the lip at the back of the hand holes so the maker can be opened up to about 95 degrees. Here I have installed a 1 inch, di one eighth inch diameter pin in the 3 16 hinge hole so the maker will open to 1 16 when it is closed. Another view of the modified hinge and pin. my grid layout tools. The grooves are 7 8 inch apart and about 1 32nd inch deep. They help to distribute the batter evenly so don't skip this step if you make one. My setup for holding the griddles down, containing the dust and grinding the grooves. The simple air powered die grinder with a 3 inch cutoff wheel worked better than anything else I tried. I made this 2 inch high ring to fit in place of the stove's grate. This was needed in order to get the maker's handles high enough to miss the front escutcheon on the stove. It also helps somewhat to distribute the heat. After all this we were ready to try again. We mixed up a new batch of batter using a half a cup of sugar instead of the third cup on the first batch and let the mixture rest for about three hours before continuing. We were a bit too stressed <coughs> to video the actual test, but here's our summary of the test number two coming up. Okay, this is our second Marcosita Maker test with our homemade two griddle Marcosita Maker. And you can see the mess we made all over the stove. So there's the Marcosita Maker and this uh, piece of metal plate we put on here so we could handle turning the thing over. Um, <laughs> this is sort of the results. We ate some. 
Uh, we used a uh, ice cream cone recipe that we modified a little bit and there are several of them out there uh, anyway and so you can see we started out by burning the Dickens out of things uh, I used this meter to try to get a handle on temperatures and so I what I found is that we we uh, with this stove burner here and the riser that I put underneath it uh, we don't get uh, even enough heat all the way to the outer edge, which isn't a big surprise because the Mexican guys seem to have a, a, a you know bigger, broader burner. Uh, so that's for the next time. Uh, we're getting the uh, uh, the uh, pan or the Marquesita maker. Uh, what is it called, honey? Uh, seasoned. Okay, so that's looking good. And we did uh, add a little Nutella to a couple of them here once we got going. Uh, we were using a third of a cup of, uh, uh, of batter per Marquesita. And we should actually have been using uh, six, tablespoon, six tablespoons, and that's only five. And so we could have had that other tablespoon in there. Probably need to come up with something that's just right so we only have to pour once. Uh, but I'd say all in all, you know, I mean, considering that the what is was the center is darker than the edges, uh, we didn't do too bad, uh, and it has gotten firm. Uh, this recipe uses more sugar than the Rick Bayless recipe that we found on the internet some time ago, and so we'll probably stick with this one, uh, and we'll work uh, on using getting a bigger burner so that we can uh, uh, so that we can heat more evenly from the center to the edges um, what else can I tell you we, we use this Pam like stuff here uh, to grease the uh, uh, Marquesita maker uh, and I have quite a mess to clean up as you can see here uh, the thing did pretty good at keeping the stuff in the middle after I, you know, I pour it in the middle here, and it tends to run that way a little bit, which is probably my fault somewhere along the line, but it seems to be doable. Oh yeah, one batch here, which is two eggs, half a cup of sugar, quarter cup of butter melted and cooled, three tablespoons of milk, half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a third of a cup of all-purpose flour with a little bit of salt, and three tablespoons of vegetable oil uh, worked out again to give us about five marcasitas. Maybe it would have been four if we would have made them all big enough. So that's it for now.